now we are going to work on our fin walled pressure vessel problem. So uh, this will undoubtedly come up on an exam, so let's go ahead and see um, and figure out um, some of the problems that we could kind of expect to see. So let's look at our picture first. So I have, let's hopefully I've done this in the right direction now, <laughs> my coordinate system here. Uh, I have this thin walled pressure vessel, so it looks like here that the diameter is equal to 30 meters. So that means my radius is equal to 15 meters. Um, also, we looking. Uh, let's see that. Make sure. So let's read some of the problem statement. To look at the rest, but make sure that we're in a thin walled pressure vessel. So, just writing again. Diameter equals 30 meters. My radius equals 15 meters. Um, I have an aluminum pressure vessel. So once I hear the words aluminum, I know that my Young's modulus y is equal to. Actually, let me quit my kernel. Always helpful. You never know who is working in your notebook. So 69. Gigapascal, 6 times 9 to 10 to 9. I know that my nu is going to be equal to 0 0.3 for metals. Again, uh, these are not going to be given on an exam. So I know that my also, my thickness, T, is equal to 0 0.1 meters. I know that my radius is equal to 15 meters. So let's go ahead. And I know my conditions, if my R or T is greater than or equal to 10, I could use my thin wall pressure vessel. So let's confirm that. R divided by T. Uh, definitely. So once we know that, once we have this thin wall pressure vessel, we know that our stress tensor is going to be this, depending on, let's look at our configuration. So one and two. So we know that along this kind of one direction, that's our circumferential along two. So this is going to be our hoop direction, effectively. This is going to be our longitudinal direction. So again, we can write out this. We know that there's going to be a plane stress. So we know that there's going to be sigma one, one. Sigma 2, 2, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And there's also going to be a strain in 1, 1, which is going to be 1, e times uh, stress 1, 1 minus mu, stress 2, 2, and stress 2, 2 equals 1 over e times sigma 2, 2 minus mu times sigma 1, 1. But we know that we're working with hoop and longitudinal stress. So really, the, st the equation that we want to write uh, is just a substitution. So our stress tensor for thin wall pressure vessels is going to be and given that coordinate system, this same exact solution, but we're just changing ones and l's. So I'm going to have also a hoop strain, hoop minus mu times sigma l. I'm going to have a longitudinal strain over e times sigma l minus mu sigma hoop, and that's it. I also know my sigma hoop is equal to delta p r over t. Uh, and I know that my longitudinal is just going to be sigma hoop divided by 2. That's it. So I can already start to kind of plug and write essentially some of those expressions. So actually, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Sig H is equal to LP times R divided by T. So you can look at that one right there. I know that my sig L is equal to sig H divided by 2, not 3. And those are just some of the values. Again, write these out as you're working through these problems. So Initial resistance of the strain gauges. Actually, let's go ahead and go back. Sorry, one more second. <laughs> so, if I have this configuration, so one, four, two, and three, I know that my uh, epsilon one is going to be measuring the strain in the uh, strain gauge in the one arm and the forearm are going to be equal, and they're going to be measuring the strain in one one direction, which is going to be that hoop strain. So, this and my two is equal to three, and that's going to be equal to the longitudinal. So this, which we're going to call the total strain, E1 minus E2 minus E3, epsilon 3 plus epsilon 4, that is going to equal just 2 epsilon H minus 2 epsilon L. That's it. So we will use that uh, in order to kind of solve this expression. Um, so let's go ahead and see again what the problem is actually asking us to do. But you can see again how we're approaching this problem. We'll write everything out. Look at your strain gauges. What, where are they measuring? Are they measuring in the hoop or the longitudinal? Write out these expressions. Fill out what we're going to be essentially measuring in here. And look at, you can see all the expressions that are kind of hidden in there. So I can ask you for the hoop strain, the longitudinal strain, the hoop stress, the longitudinal stress, and all, or the pressure. Uh, all these are going to be kind of questions that are can be asked. But you approach it the same way. So initial strain gauges are at 200. So then that's just telling us that our Wheatstone bridge at balance, i.e. when there's no uh, pressure, it should be our output voltage should be zero. Um, gauge factor is 4, so F is equal to 4. So 
we let me go ahead and write that down again automatically in my notebook, not in my not in this. So my f is equal to four. Um, initially, a shunt is placed across gauge one, and the output reads um, twenty units. Um, so I so old I can't read the units. After we're pressurized, we read an output of fifty. So the strain gauges are two hundred ohms, um, and then we have this shunt essentially that's uh, placed across our uh, thin wall pressure vessel. So the shunt, let me go ahead, actually go back over here. So this is hearkening back to uh, this idea here. So we have the our calibration idea, right? So we had this shunt resistor. So in this problem, uh, there's a little typo here. So we place a shunt. So our shunt resistor, so shunt, so our, our S, that is going to be equal in this problem to 500,000 uh, ohms. So let's go ahead and write that out. So the strain gauge, so let's get our R, uh, our R1, if you want to kind of put that here, is going to be 200. And then our shunt resistor, RS, is going to be equal to 500,000. So it says that initially, once I place the shunt, once I close the switch uh, here, it outputs this 20 unit value. Uh, so let's go back to our kind of notes. So we know that we have an expression for once we close that switch, what is the kind of equivalent strain? So I'm going to say strain. I'm going to call that. I'm going to do the absolute value of uh, basically minus 1 divided by F times my Basically, the again my strain gauge uh, resistance divided by R1 plus you know this is just RG here, but again R1 RS it's, it's not uh, you know a huge uh, <laughs> uh, a huge deal here R1 plus RS and the value and so that is going to be that you know shunt resistance. Um, so at that value, once I close that switch, that is going to be the strain from that change in resistance. But then it says, and we read this output voltage of 20. But once we pressurize it, we get a, a different value of strain. So our total strain, i.e., when I say total strain, I'm always, uh, I mean epsilon 1 minus epsilon 2 plus epsilon 3 plus epsilon 4. And that is going to be equal kind of this total strain. That's what we're measuring. Uh, again, that's the strain once we, you know, again, you place your strain gauges on the material, you close that switch, so we see what's that strain for, you know, that change in resistance. But once we pressurize it, what's the change, you know, the strain that we're measuring is going to be the strain in those four arms. So my total strain, excuse me, here is going to be equal to this ratio. So 50 divided by 20 times my shunt strain. Because again, this was... At this strain, when we close the switch, we read an output of 20. Once we pressurize, we read an output of 50. So that new strain, the strain that's you know essentially induced once we uh, you know once we pressurize that pressure vessel, that is going to be this strain right here. So that is going to be my total strain. So the question is asking us: We need to calculate the hoop and longitudinal stress from this value. Well, I know that I just wrote an expression that my total strain, epsilon 1 minus epsilon 2 minus epsilon 3, is going to be 2EH minus 2EL. So let's go ahead and write out those values. EH is going to be equal to 1 divided by Y times sig H minus nu times sig L. I know that my EL is going to be equal to, this is why I love thin wall pressure vessel problems, sig L minus nu times sig H. Because in a thin wall pressure vessel problem, we always need to know what's the thickness and what's the radius. So now, look at what's left in these values. We know everything except for del P. So now all I have to do is just solve for when total strain, I know that's going to be equal to 2 times EH minus 2 times EL, and solve for del P. That's it. That's my change in uh, that pressure. So once I have this, so I'm going to set this equal. This is going to be del P is equal to this. And then now, what's my sig H? What's my sig L? What's my EH? What's my EL? Everything's solved. So that's basically everything that you're going to kind of deal with in this problem.
I hope that uh, helps, uh, and hopefully it'll help with some problem sets. And again, you could kind of expect to see something like this on an exam as well. Um, so yeah, good luck. And yeah, uh, I hope, and if you have any questions, please let me know. And next time we're going to get into uh, a fun example of strain rosettes, rectangular and delta rosettes, and how we're going to use those to measure very, very complex stress states. So uh, I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks. Bye.